Alfred Bernard Nobel is best known for the prize which is named after him and he was able to do this prize due to the success of his business ventures. Amongst many other things, he held 355 patents. He invented dynamite and it was largely because of this that he made his fortune. This is going to be the first of a number of videos in which I look at how his invention was used in the Second World War and in particular the massive factories which supplied the Nazi war machine. Alfred Nobel was born on the 21st of October 1833 in Stockholm, Sweden. He was the third son of the Swedish engineer and industrialist Emmanuel Nobel. He had two older brothers, Robert, 1829 to 1896, and Ludwig, 1831 to 1888, and a younger brother, Emil Oscar Nobel, who was born in 1843. In 1842, aged only eight, he went to St. Petersburg, where his father, with the help of the Norwegian government, had founded a number of iron and steel works which, amongst other clients, supplied the Russian army. Part of his family stayed in Russia, and one of his nephews was the Swedish-Russian oil magnate, Emmanuel Nobel, 1859-1932, who built the first diesel-powered ship, which was called the Vandal. Thanks to the wealth of his father, Alfred enjoyed first-class training from private tutors, by the age of 17, he already spoke Swedish, Russian, German, English and French. He was also able to travel to various countries with his father. Nitroglycerine was invented in 1847 by Ascanio Sobrero. Sobrero initially wanted to keep his invention a secret as he considered it too dangerous for practical use. However, he shared his secret with the Nobel father and son when he met them in Paris in 1850. The younger Nobel showed great interest in the invention of nitroglycerine and believed that it would make a useful explosive. Between 1860 and 1864 he experimented with explosives in the coal mining industry in the Ruhr area at the Dorstfeld Colliery near Dortmund. In 1863, he invented a detonator which would blow up nitroglycerine with greater certainty. Experiments with explosives are, of course, very dangerous. The inventor of nitroglycerine, Ascanio Sobrero, had been badly injured in an accident. On the 3rd of September 1864, Alfred Nobel's younger brother was killed alongside four other people in an explosion. Emil Oscar Nobel was only 19 years old. From then on, Alfred Nobel carried out experiments only in special factories in Sweden and Germany. Nonetheless, more accidents occurred. A chance leak during transport in 1866 led to the discovery of dynamite. Allegedly, or this is how the story goes, it's Possibly not true, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Some nitroglycerine dripped onto the loading area of a transport carriage, the floor of which had been packed with diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is earth with a high level of fossilized remains of a certain type of algae. Nobel patented the process, which was optimized in a, a mixing ratio of three to one. The product was named dynamite. Nobel always credited Ascanio Sobrero as being the inventor of nitroglycerine and paid an annual fee to the Italian for its use. However, the latter always felt that he had been cheated given the huge sums that Nobel earned from it. Owing to the demand for dynamite in the mining business, Nobel became very rich. He owned over 90 dynamite factories in various countries and held a patent for the explosive, meaning that no one else could copy it, although attempts were done so by replacing diatomaceous earth with 
other similar products. Nobel continued to research with explosives. In 1875, he develops gelignite, which is easily moldable, cheap to produce, burns slowly, and is safe to handle without protection, provided, of course, that nothing capable of detonating it is in its vicinity. In 1887, he patented ballistite, which is a smokeless propellant made from nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin. There is a clear military advantage of not giving away one's position by the smoke from weapons, and the Italian government immediately replaced its weapons with this, which led to Nobel being forced to leave France, where he was then living. In 1891, he went to live in San Remo, where he had owned a villa for 21 years, and he died there on the 10th of December 1896 of a cerebral hemorrhage. The Nobel family fortune was to a large extent thanks to its use in weapons, not just dynamite for the uh, mining industry. To a large extent, I think it would be fair to say that dynamite and gelignite largely have civilian applications. These explosives are not really suitable for waging war. Of course, I mean, they do have uses if you want to blow up a bridge or something like that, then, then yes. But on the whole, their application is civilian. However, uh, low smoke ballistite powder is an exception as this revolutionized all firing technology from pistols to artillery. So this is very much a military weapon. In 1888, Ludwig, Nobel's older brother, died. A French newspaper uh, mixed him up with his brother Alfred Nobel and ran an obituary headed Le Marchand de la Mort est Mort. The merchant of death is dead. Nobel's wealth was explained by the fact that he'd found the means to kill more people faster than ever before. Now, once more, this could well be just a legend, but it's said that this is the moment that Alfred Nobel started thinking of his legacy. What would posterity think of him? He was a pacifist, although, I mean, didn't stop him buying the Swedish armament company Bofors in 1894. Now, Nobel had no children, and in his will, he left around 94% of his fortune, that that was then around 31.2 million crowns, to what would become the Nobel Foundation. And that is where the money today comes from for the prizes that are given the Nobel Prizes. However, that's slightly outside the scope of what I want to do. In future videos, I plan on looking at what happened to his company as well as a more in-depth use of one of its factories, which supplied around 30% of all the ammunition used by the Nazis on the Eastern Front in World War II. I know the phrase to be turning in one's grave is often used, but I'm going to use it here because I cannot think of a better example. If Nobel had known what was to become of his company and his inventions, he indeed would be turning in his grave. So thank you for listening. And if you'd like to know when I upload other things well i'll tell you now it's an, it's a friday at uh, eight o'clock my time seven o'clock um, in uh, the uk and 11 o'clock in los angeles my time being central european time i also upload at other times sometimes as well so the friday is an absolute minimum but then the other videos appear from time to time on anniversaries or people's birthdays or something along those lines. So uh, if you want to know when I'm uploading, then you can, of course, subscribe and you can press the bell thing as well. Ding, ding. 
Thanks for listening.